So as we all know, this past week, the wrestling world lost another one of its legends, something unfortunately it seems like we talk about way too frequently, way too often. Leon White, Big Van Vader, passed away at the age of, I believe it was, 63 after uh, a bout with pneumonia. And we all know that uh, Leon had been in less than stellar health for a while now. He had talked about it a while back that his cardiologists were talking about he had two years or less to live because of a heart condition. And unfortunately, it finally caught up with him. And when I think about Vader, you know, it's unfortunate. And I think about his family, his fans, and everybody else. You know, it's, it's a loss. It really is a big loss to the wrestling industry. I, I think about Vader, and one of the things I always liked about Vader was the fact that he was a huge star and people knew who the hell he was without the benefit of Vince McMahon and the Titan Tower machine. It's kind of like Sting in that sense. You know, the guys that, even though Vader spent a couple of years in WWF, they were arguably some of the worst years of his career, the least productive years of his career. This was a guy who was biggest at his best and his brightest when it didn't involve WWE. This is a guy that traveled the world, drew money wherever he went, pretty much except WWE. And when I think about the mid to late 90s as you transition into the Attitude Era, one of my great annoyances with that era still to this day of many is the fact that Vader was basically cast aside and just treated as a jag, just another guy. And believe me, especially for you younger fans that didn't get to experience Vader at the height of his power and the height of his awesomeness, Vader was anything but just another guy. Talk about a dude that used to play in the NFL for the Rams, legit 400 pounds, looked like a badass, acted like a badass, walked like a badass, talked like a badass, and most importantly of all, wrestled like a badass. Now, if you're not familiar with Vader... I give it to you this way for the younger generation. Think about Braun Strowman with a great gimmick and arguably, potentially, even more functionally athletic in terms of the stuff that he could do in the ring. And certainly to me, a better personality, a better talker. That's Vader. To me, my opinion, because of the way the wrestling business is today, and who is featured and who usually gets over and fans usually get behind. If a Vader in his prime in the early to mid 90s from Japan, from WCW, was transported here into today's modern wrestling business, I fully believe that he could be the biggest star of them all. And I don't say that because the dude just died or to talk about hyperbole or anything like that. To me, that's legitimate. He was a super heavyweight that could move. He could actually work. For Christ's sakes, the dude had like five moves that you look back at and you could classify them all as finishers. You know, thinking about like the choke slam and the Vader bomb and the Vader salt. Think about it this way. I think about him and Bam Bam Bigelow, 400 poundish dudes that could do backflips off of the top rope. Now, we see a lot of dudes my size, a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, are able to do that stuff. Think about Braun Strowman doing a fucking backflip as a finisher in today's wrestling business. Even with all the other guys sitting there and doing that. That is whole other level, otherworldly shit. And Leon could do that. And I think about one of the cool things about him and his run in WWF is when he would sit there and he cuts on the microphone. Well, he was shit! <laughs> you know, he was, a, he was a physical dude in the ring. He was a bit stiff, but he was sensitive. I always hated Shawn Michaels for sitting there and fucking helping to ruin Vader's push in WWF in the mid-90s because he was a guy that they could have made a lot of money with. He was a guy you had all types of things that felt like you could have done, but Vince didn't see it, he didn't understand it, he didn't get it, and therefore, as we know all these years later, if Vince doesn't see it, know it, get it, it's not happening no matter what. 
It's like the whole thing of you bring in Dr. Death Steve Williams and you try to stick him in a freaking brawl for all concept. It's that type of shit that they did with a guy like this. But in no way, shape, or form does that take away from what this dude accomplished. He was a massive star in Japan. He was a massive star here stateside. Just because WWE doesn't really acknowledge it, just because WWE pretends like he wasn't that big of a deal, doesn't mean that he was some ham and egg jabroni. He was not just another guy. He was a big star. And even when I went to work a couple of days ago and the news broke that Vader passed, because people know that I watch wrestling, I've been a wrestling fan for years, they come up, came up to me and not only were telling me about Vader's passing, they were telling me stories about when they were a kid and they would go uh, to D.C. or they would go to a Baltimore or in a lot of cases here in Richmond to the Coliseum and they would see WCW, they'd see Flair, they'd see Steamboat, Dusty, you'd hear those names. But then they would start talking about Vader. And they were talking about how cool Vader was and how big of a badass he was. And they remember all these years later him flipping off the back rope, doing a, off the top rope a backflip at 400 freaking pounds. Key thing, if you do something, make it matter. Make it have impact. Make it count. And Vader most certainly did. And I've always personally had a great frustration with the WWE for not highlighting more of Vader's career. Like when they brought him back in that thing they were doing with Heath Slater building up to Raw uh, 1000 a few years back. I mean, when Vader came back, the fans were popping. The fans were excited. They were legit excited as they freaking should have been. It was great to see the dude. It's just always pissed me off that the WWE didn't embrace him a little bit more, didn't bring him around a little bit more, didn't do some type of DVD set featuring his career because his career most certainly deserves to be featured. I mean, this is a guy, if I recall correctly, early on in his career when he went over to Japan, he wrestled the Noki, beat him, I believe, and it caused all types of shit downstream to happen because he incited a freaking riot. I mean, you just looked at Vader. The dude was legit, and he was no punk in the ring, and he could actually work. Sure, he's not flying around like a 200-pound cruiserweight, but he shouldn't have to. But he could still do some of the shit that they did, but they couldn't do the 400-pound super heavyweight shit that he did. When you talk about best big men in the history of professional wrestling, you will hear about Andre the Giant, as you should. One of the truly great marquee box office attractions of all time in the business. You'll hear about Big Show. Maybe not from the modern fans so much because they got worn out and they got Big Show fatigued after all these years, but the fact is he belongs on that list. He absolutely does. And then you think about Vader and all the stuff that he did and all the money he was able to draw in different places around the world. He's right in that class. He's right on that list. And for my money, as much as I look at Andre as being like the attraction of the attraction of super heavyweights and giants of all time, and Big Show being a great talent, which he always was, and a guy that you could have consistency out of and make a certain amount of money all of those years. Vader, to me, when you look at the entirety of the package, you could make the argument for 400-plus pound guys, the super heavyweights, the giants of the industry, he might have to go down as the greatest one of all time. And that's not because he's dead now. That's because it's arguably the truth, if not flat out fact. It irritates me to no fucking hell, especially knowing that Vader was talking about his health and his condition and everything else. Whether you believe it or not when it comes to professional wrestling, when you assume everything is a work, who knows? But the fact is, it was a possibility. And the fact is, either way, it was well past time to induct Vader into the WWE Hall of Fame. He deserved the adulation of the fans one more time. He deserved to be a part of the biggest weekend of the business this year. He deserved that spotlight. He deserved that shine. He deserved for a younger generation of fans to understand the impact, the legacy, and the accomplishments of this man because if they watched WWE's product, by and large, they would have absolutely no idea who the hell the guy was, and that's a shame. It's an absolute crock of shit. And now to put him in after he's already passed, to me, somewhat similarly to the Macho Man, is a huge disgrace. And while it would still be nice 
It just doesn't feel the same and it doesn't have the same meaning or impact. So to Vince, fuck you. To the WWE, screw you. Because it should have never went down like this. There was no reason. It's what I talk about even with the Hogan thing, with all of the mixed conflicting feelings I have and all the racist shit he said. I also know this. Nothing is forever. And even being torn about it, there's still something about it someday. I want to see things made whole again. Because you want to do it before you can't do it anymore. And in recent years, we've lost Warrior. We've lost Savage, Dusty, Roddy. You want to make things right with these guys because the fact is you don't know a lot how long they're going to be around. I hate to sound so morbid about it, but that's the truth. I damn it all, Vader deserved better than this. Vader deserved more respect. Vader deserved to have his name put up there in the pantheon of greats of professional wrestling history. Vader deserved to be a part of the WrestleMania weekend experience. Vader's fans and wrestling fans deserve to have him be a part of it. And it's bullshit that it's not going to happen now. But what it won't do, what it won't do, is change the fact that Vader is arguably the greatest super heavyweight, the greatest giant in the history of professional wrestling. It won't change the fact that Vader for years was a legit international superstar. It won't change the fact that all these years later, that people that haven't watched wrestling in 20 years will still talk to me about guys like Vader in the same light they do Ric Flair and Dusty freaking Rose. It won't change the fact that I missed the time and period of wrestling where it felt like I was watching men do manly things. Vader was a dude. He was a man. He walked like a man. He acted like a man. He talked like a man. He cussed like a man. He kicked ass like a fucking man. When you looked at Vader, even though knowing it's bullshit, even though it's scripted, predetermined, fake, whatever the hell you wanted to call it, you looked at him and thought he was just crazy enough that he might be taking this shit seriously and it might be real. Ask Ken Shamrock how that goes when you piss off Vader. Yeah, MMA. Here's one up the side, bitch. Nighty night. I miss when we could watch wrestling and see legit dudes and they could help you to at least temporarily suspend some of your disbelief because you're like, that's crap, that's bullshit, give me a break. But that could be real. That toes that line. Vader was a great <laughs> line toer. Vader could make you think and believe it was at least for that moment real. A true legend of the business, no matter what WWE or anybody else tries to tell you. A legend. Absolute legend. And it's a shame that things weren't made whole. But I know, and fans that know, know that Vader was a big deal. And as far as this, it's time! It's Vader time! It should always be Vader time! He was a badass, and he deserves some respect. Rest in peace, Vader. Rest in peace, my man.